Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss certain do's and don'ts that will help us to pass any Red Hat certification exam. So let us first look into what are the do's that we can follow. So the first one is we need to understand the exam objectives. Make it very clear that after the certification, the Red Hat is certifying you that you can do or perform certain set of tasks. Now those tasks are mapped with the objectives for that particular exam. So you need to understand the objectives so that you can prepare accordingly. So you go through the Red Hat website, the exam that you are going to clear or you are going to attempt and look into the objectives and make sure that once you practice, you are able to achieve all those objectives. Now one of the way of achieving those objectives is getting trained. Now you can have a trainer or you can train yourself by watching certain YouTube videos or you might follow certain book. So whatever you do, you must ensure that you get some kind of training. Otherwise, there will be certain things that you might not be able to cover because by just looking at the objectives, it might not be clear how in depth you need to achieve that particular objective. So getting training is certainly going to help you achieve those objectives. Plus, it's also going to tell you how to attempt a particular question. So there are different ways a question can be attempted to what depth you need to do it or what all things you need to do. You certainly are going to get a lot of information on that if you go through any kind of training. Even if you watch certain YouTube videos, they are also helpful. In my videos also explained what is the extent or what actually is required to be done for any particular question. Another important thing based upon the first and the second point is that we must align the training towards the objectives. The training must focus on the objectives that are there for the exam. So that's why the trainer or certain person here you're following on YouTube helps you to map that or to achieve those objectives. Otherwise, you might cover a lot of extra things, which is nothing but just a wastage of time, or you might skip some of the things, which again will not help you to clear the exam. So it's important that your training is aligned with the objectives of the exam. Another aspect which is very important is you need to do a lot of practice. It's very easy to watch something or to listen to something and then fix saying that okay yes i have understood that but once you do it then only you'll find out what are the difficulties that you are facing and to overcome those difficulties you have to have a lot of practice so make sure that you dedicate a certain fixed amount of time on daily basis be it half an hour or one hour but you must dedicate a time period on daily basis to do the practice even if you have gone through the concepts once twice but still you do the practice until the day of the exam it is going to help you a lot during the exam now the first four points for what you can do before the exam now on the day of the exam or during the time of the exam there are a few things that you can do the very first thing is you need to understand the environment and this is very important because it will be slightly different from what you normally get. It's not that they are going to give you a different Linux. Red Hat is going to be the same, but it will have a few other things. For example, you need to understand where are the machines where you need to attempt the question. For which question, which oh, sorry, for which machine, which questions are to be done that you need to understand. How to attempt, what is the password, uh, where are the questions. So all these things you need to understand thoroughly before you start attempting the test now how you will understand the environment for that you need to read the instructions carefully so the very first thing that you should do after starting the exam is you need to read the instructions spend some time on reading the instructions once or twice and make sure you understand them fully then only you will be easily able to move around within the machines within the instructions within the questions and everything will go smoothly for you. Next, understand the question before you start attempting it. 
sometimes it becomes very tempting that okay you have seen a keyword and you immediately start doing whatever you have learned in the training but that might not be asked or there will be small thing that you have skipped for example let's suppose that let's take a very uh, simple example that they ask you to create a file whose name is question and the spelling is capital Q capital U so everything in uppercase but in the flow you don't look into this you don't pay attention and you create the file with the name question but you name it with lowercase q u e s t i o n everything in lowercase so although you have attempted the question you have created the file but since the file name is not what was expected it has to be in uppercase but you have made it in lowercase the answer will be wrong okay they want everything as per the question you can't do anything else because there will not be a manual checking as such or they have to match everything crisply with what was being asked so you can't deviate even one percent from the question next use the tools that are available for example the manual page the manual page will always be there so whenever you get stuck if you know how to use the manual page you are free to use it during the exam you can't use any external helping material but whatever inbuilt tools are there help man all those things you are free to use any number of time you want for any question you want and you will see that some of the questions you can directly get them done through the manual page itself right so there are certain questions like this also so you are free to use the inbuilt help tools the last thing is save some time to review so there are three hours they are more than enough believe me they are more than enough so try to finish it up in two two and a half hours and save around half an half an hour 45 minutes to review all things that you have done all the questions that you attempted so that if by mistake you have done something wrong it can be corrected now what are the don'ts okay what things you should avoid first don't be in a hurry mm, it might seem contradictory that the last point that i have said was that you need to save time and here i am saying don't be in a hurry so there is a trade off do the things little quickly but don't rush into them okay because if you really try to finish it up in let's suppose half an hour or okay it's very easy i'll do it quickly you might commit a mistake and sometimes you have to reset the system it's if you are not able to recover it so that kind of thing can be a little messy next do not do any kind of extra task if they have asked you to create one file create one file only if they ask you to create a password then only you set up the password otherwise don't do it so there are no extra marks for anything that is not part of the question very important no learning material no ex external learning material okay inbuilt tools you can use but you can't carry anything of your own into the exam be it online be it offline now this is very important don't get stuck on one question so there might be a scenario where you start uh, doing a question and you are not able to finish it there's something that you're not able to complete and hence the question is not getting done so don't spend more than 10 15 minutes on a question if you get stuck you move on to the next question okay and then come back later once you are reviewing the questions i have seen it uh, in a lot of videos or in the uh, on on internet also that people said that you need to attempt the questions in order no it's not the case you can attempt any question in any order okay so you are free to uh, do the questions which you might think are easy for you so you attempt all those and then get back to the difficult ones another misconception is that you need to reboot the system after every question no it's absolutely not required no reboot is required you want you can do it but it's not required okay so don't reboot it is just going to waste the time 
you're confident you have done the thing it's fine so if you really want to check do it once after the exam that okay all the things are persistent even after rebooting that you can do at the end once you have done all the questions but don't reboot after every question next is avoid resetting the system reset is different from reboot reboot is like shutdown and you start again reset is like formatting so whatever you things you would have done everything will be lost so reset is only in that case where you mess up the system and you are not able to recover from that only is those in only in those circumstances you should reset last thing is never panic during the exam there might be a scenario where you really get stuck on a couple of questions or you mess up the system and there is a situation where you have to reboot and now you think okay i have to redo three four questions but don't panic so don't panic stay calm if you will be calm you will be able to figure out a solution of whatever problem you are stuck so these were some of the points from my side and i believe that if you follow these suggestions uh, they are certainly going to help you to clear the exam so see you in the next video thank you